Hey guys, got another quick video for you here to show you how you can connect to your Google Cloud Platform Linux instance using your own SSH private key. So by default, any Linux instance you launch is going to have this option here to connect via SSH, which will actually open a new browser window with an SSH session in there, which would give you a command prompt. However, the process it goes through is to create and upload its own keys. This makes it where you can't use that key outside of their dashboard here. So in the event that you need to connect to your instance, say using WinSCP or using PuTTY, you're going to have to use your own private key. So to do that, what we need to do is click on the VM instance and then click the edit button. Down near the bottom of the settings, you'll see a section that says you have zero SSH keys, show and edit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click that and it gives us the opportunity to put a public SSH key in here. Now, just so you understand, a public SSH key is a key that you give away to pretty much anybody that you want to be able to authenticate yourself with. So you want to prove that you are who you say you are, so you give someone a public key. Now you keep a private key that matches the public key, and you keep that private key to yourself and don't share it with anybody, and that allows you to prove to someone who has your public key that you have the private key. So the question is, is where do we get this public key from? This is where the PuTTY key generator comes in handy. You'll notice that if you launch the PuTTY key generator or PuTTY gen, you'll have a generate option. If we click that, it asks us to move our mouse over the screen for a moment, and then it generates a public key for us. What we do is we first off change the key comment to be the username that we want to use when we're connecting to the instance. So for instance, I make use the username of R Thaxton. I can then copy everything inside this box and it goes all the way from SSH-RSA down to R Thaxton. So I'll copy that. I'll come back over to the Compute Engine dashboard and paste that value in there. And you'll notice it pulled out that comment for R Thaxton, and that's our username that we're going to log in with. We can then click the Save button. It updates the instance to now have this public key. The next thing we need to do, though, is go back to the key generator, and we need to save our private key. And this is something we're going to keep secret for ourselves. So we click the Save Private Key button. If you like, you can put a passphrase on it that will prevent people from being able to use your private key in the event they get a hold of it. But remember, it is a passphrase or a password. It can be brute force broken. So it's not perfect security. So I'm going to continue without a passphrase. And then I'm going to save this as IT5233 web server dash R Thaxton so that I know what server and username it goes with and that allows us to create the PPK file so we hit save and then just in case you want to use a Mac to connect or another Linux computer con to connect we're going to export our open SSH key and we're going to create instead of a PPK file we're going to create a PEM file so again it's the same process but this time we're going to generate a PEM file so now I have both those files saved I can then go to putty I can create a new session by putting in my username rthaxton at my IP address and I can come back to the management console here and grab my IP address and paste it in here so now I have my username at my IP address and down here under the SSH option 
next to the auth option, we're going to browse for that PPK. So we open that up. I'm going to save this session. So I'm going to name it IT5233, which I already have, and I'm going to save over it. And now I can come back and just load this into PuTTY without having to retype everything. So I click Open, and now I have a new session. Now you will probably get a prompt saying that this computer has never been contacted before and are we sure we trust it? You should only see that once and you should see it the first time that you connect. Go ahead and click yes that you'd like to trust it. But if you ever see it again from the same computer, that means something has changed and you might not want to trust the computer that you're connecting to. Okay, well that concludes uh, this screencast, in recap, what we did was we created a private key using the PuTTY key generator, using the generate option. We, in the key comment, put the username we wanted to connect with. We copied this entire public key into the settings down here for our instance. And then lastly, we saved a private key in both a PPK and PEM format.